These are Isla lamb chops. Isla lamb is very special. It's, uh, you see, there's quite a lot of fat on it and you would think, oh, well, I'm not going to eat that. There's too much fat. But when you cook it, all the fat goes and you will not eat that. But this fat is protecting the meat. So the meat is really smooth and, and, and mellow and um, it's just like it melts in your palate. And Isla lamb, I've, well, I've eaten a lot of lamb and in my country, Normandy, we have a really great lamb, but this one is also as tasty as it is tender. Sometimes, sometimes you, you find very tender lamb, but it's not very, very tasty. And this one is exceptional. I don't know why. I suppose it's because the, the grass is so good quality. It's, 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 it's uh, very rich and, uh, and very thick. Or maybe it's also because they live by the shore or just because they are happy Isla lambs. And that helps. So we're going to cook them. Just fry them. So they will just be fried and no, you don't need to put any butter or any oil in the pan because the fat will melt and will take it away. And here, this, this is a little stock. Well, I've done a, a lot. I've reduced it so that you really keep only the best, the, the juice. And you can smell, well, you can, I can smell it. It's very, very perfumey. It's got all the good flavor of the, of the lamb meat. That was, you cook your stock for at least two hours. This will warm up. While it warms up, I add, because I like it and I am a Norman, just a little butter, not much. You know, a chef would maybe put double a proportion, but uh, I try to keep it very healthy. So just a little butter to thicken the juice. And it's already spiced because there's some uh, uh, piment d'espelette, which is a, a French chili. There are different peppers. There's uh, a bit of... Uh, of caraway here and uh, I will so again for for the the cooking for the, the you can you can have it pink or well cooked depends what people like my taste would be to have the, the lamb pink again so I will leave it like that to to simmer it's, no, it's not simmering. In fact, I seize it uh, on, a, on a quite a, a warm fire. fire. Here we leave that slowly cooking. And what I just have, a pinch of long peppercorn, a pinch of cumin, This is the way Maroc in Morocco you will eat lamb with cumin a lot. And some salt, not much. We'll leave it cook. The lamb is, is, is cooking nicely. we we'll leave it here. The sauce is thickening, but there's an ingredient which is missing, and I would say a major ingredient. This is whiskey. So I have... With, with this sauce, we need, um, I wouldn't go with a very, very peaty whiskey. I've chosen Beaumont 12 because there will be a touch of honey in the sauce and uh, that will really pair very well with, uh, with, with Beaumont. So you add the whiskey only at the end. You just turn the, the fire off and leave it warm like that, but never, never, ever put whiskey in your sauce at the beginning because you're losing everything. So I have a very poor little miniature because once again, my camera crew has uh, have liked the Bomo I had, so I had to borrow a miniature from my neighbor. They're terrible. Mm, that would go very well. 
So this is done. Now we need just one minute for the meat, but it's, it's nearly there. Mm. The smell is wonderful. It's done. Turn it off. And to accompany this, um, sorry, I need something to not to burn my finger. I have uh, chosen a polenta. It's not exactly, it's not a, an ordinary polenta because here there are little currants, raisin, black currants, and I, these have been soaked in bomor. I had a, um, some bomor maybe one, two months ago, and uh, I decided to use it for my raisin. This is a, a, a good thing to do when you ha have done some tastings. Or you can vat all your whiskies and leave them uh, with raisins or, or apricots or uh, a lot of dried fruit in a, in a jar. Forget them. That's the most difficult thing, maybe, to forget them. Forget them for three months and they will have soaked in the whiskey. They will have swallowed all this whiskey. And when you taste them, they are just juicy, wonderful. Now, here comes the lamb. So, there is a little fat in the pan. You don't want that, so you throw it. And you deglaze one second, I would say, with the sauce. Now, I had also prepared a few carrots. And the carrots, just warm them a little with a little touch of honey, not much, just to rub them in the honey and they will warm. And after that, we just have to do a good square of polenta. The polenta is cooked in a, in a broth. Um, it's cooked in a chicken broth, for instance. That will be fine. And it's not easy to take away because it's very soft. But I like it this way. I know in Italy sometimes you have it quite hard, but I prefer it. That's my taste. I prefer it quite soft, even if it's not as nice in the plate as it should be. And the carrots. The carrots, I don't put any spices because the rest of the dish is quite spiced. And uh, that could go with uh, some rosemary, but um, I don't have any rosemary in my garden for the moment and it's hard to find at this season. So here we are with the lamb, try to hide that. So polenta, carrot, isla lamb and bomor. This is isla lamb by the sea.